incorporated this into their life and in their business have been really successful with uh, using this. So, how many of you know DISC? Right? DISCs? Okay. Who, where are my D's? D's? I's? We can see here at the yes. um, S's? Yeah. Hug them if you're next to an S hugger. Um, C's? Processing, thinking, right? <laughs> It's like, are we on schedule or are we not on schedule? No, um, <laughs> all right, how many of you know the, the five love languages? Mine is, my love language is gifts. Woo! Other gifts? Woo! All right, let's see if I can remember them all. Um, who is words of affirmation? Physical touch? Quality time and um, acts of kindness. Acts of kindness. Okay. All, right. All right. So, how many of you know Myers Briggs? You have done your Myers Briggs test. Oh, good. All right. Introvert, extrovert, feeler, thinker, judgment, receiver. All right. Good. All right. So this is another thing. All right. The five basic things is another thing. All right, fill in this blank. We are in the blank business. We are in the people. Good, that's the right answer. We are in the people business, right? The the vehicle, right? The vehicle is direct sales and specifically cosmetics, right? But the business we're in is the people business, and so the better you understand people the better you're going to do in this business. So that's why I want you to learn this. There is a woman named Harry Good. Harry Good wrote a book called In Pursuit of Happiness. And she also teaches. So Mary Kay Corporate has Perry Good come in sometimes and teach our staff members different things. So I was in one of her classes. It was a two-day class. I could only be in the first day because I had a business trip the second day. So in the first day, she taught these five basic needs. I have not read the book in pursuit of happiness. I hear the book is not as good as the class. So if you buy the book, you're on your own. But the class, I'm going to teach you right now. So we all have these five basic needs, right? So as I go through them, you might say, well, that sounds like me, and then another one might sound like you, and then another one might sound like you. And it's because we're multidimensional people. We all have all five needs. The key with this is to identify your number one need and to live according to that number one need as much as you possibly can. Now, the other key to this is to, is to understand the most important people in your life's number one need and help them live according to their number one need as much as they possibly can. That's how relationships work when both people's needs are getting met. So, number one need that I want to tell you about is power and achievement. Power and achievement. Bless you. Power and achievement. These people love to be challenged. They are achievement-oriented. Um, they are maximizers, right? There is no too much. There is no, like, they are go-getters who want it all. They are um, overachievers. Um, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. So a great example of a power and achievement person in Mary Kay would be Gloria Mayfield Banks, right? They, um, they like to break records. They like to do things that have never been done before. Um, they don't settle. They go for the most and the best. They, they are record breakers, right? They love that. That energizes them to break a record or to do more than anyone has ever done before. So, Gloria Mayfield Banks is an extreme version of a power and achievement person. And the beauty with them is that you turn them on and set them free. They, they're self-starters. They go get it. They're after it like, you know, a pit bull with a bone. They're really... Like go getters, right? And they, like they don't, they don't do just enough. That's not in their vocabulary to just skate by. They they go for it all. 
It's like all the way, every time. So that's the beauty of having someone on your team who is a power and achievement person, or if you're a power and achievement person in this business, then you're going to want to break records. You're going to, you're going to want to, the, the, you know, just asking the director, what's the fastest everyone's ever, ever debut? Um, what's the, you know, what's the record for the most recruits in a month? Right, like you're always trying to find that thing that no one's ever done or the best that's been done to be the best. The challenge with power and achievement people is that if they're not getting their needs met in one area of your life, then they redirect their focus to another area of your life. So they might sign their agreement, go and target for their car in their first week, be a DIQ in their first month, be all excited, and then all of a sudden, she's not in Mary Kay anymore. She's now the, you know, running for mayor in her town. <laughs> so the key is to keep power and achievement people challenged and striving towards something in their business. To really keep them going towards something great in their Mary Kay business because if it's not getting fulfilled here, they've got to get it fulfilled somewhere else. There's a national who she was a million dollar director, she was queen of unit sales, and she was a director, she became a national. <coughs> She's in like, she was in the top 10 of her seminars as a national. And then all of a sudden, it was harder to climb up the national ranks than it was for her to climb up the director ranks. So she pivoted, and she started becoming super mom to her four, three boys. So all of a sudden now, she's going to all of her kids' events, they're in college, one of them play college football, she's going to all of the football games. She lived in one state, the kid was three states away in another co at a college. She was going to the home games, the away games, she was taking her kids on spring break, vac spring break vacations to Costa Rica and Sweden and Australia. She became super mom because she needed to win somewhere big. So she became the best mom of all of her kids' Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And all their, all their friends were like, your mom's so cool, your mom's so awesome, your mom's so, she's that every day, your mom. So she was getting that need to be number one met outside of her Mary Kay business. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when our last kid finally graduated college, I called her and I was like, <coughs> there are no more football games to go to. There are no more spring breaks to take your kids on. Get your butt back focused on your Mary Kay business, right? Because they get, the, that's what will happen. It's like, I'll focus on this right now, and then all of a sudden, that's not feeding me. I need to be focused on something that else is going to feed me. So, power and achievement people, stay focused on this. Directors, if you have power and achievement people, help them stay focused on this. Got it? Get some water. Come on, all that's right. All right, number two. Love and belonging. Love and belonging. Oh, really. Love and belonging people, they have a huge heart. They're like people magnets. They get their energy from people and they give out energy to other people. They're, they're like, you know, all hard all the time, right? So, thank you. Thank you. So loving and belonging people. Uh, people love to be around these people because they lead with their heart. Before you ever, ever meet them like, and get to know them, you feel their love. They're others focused. Right? They care more than what's expected. Right? And so the beauty is, obviously, people love to be in their space. They, they collect friendships. They collect real healthy relationships. The challenge with love and belonging people is they also attract unhealthy relationships. See, sometimes they um, dance on that mentor and rescuer line on the wrong side of that line. So instead of being mentors to people, they become rescuers. And the difference between a mentor and a rescuer is a mentor attracts survivors and a rescuer attracts victims. And the difference between a, a victim and a survivor is that a survivor has been in the wilderness, has gotten out, and has made the decision not to go back. 
A victim is someone who finds a way to live in the wilderness. A survivor uses her imagination. A victim uses her memory. So with your love and belonging team members, directors with your love and belonging um, consultants, the key is to keep them on the mentor side of the relationship, not on the rescuer side of the relationship. Like you might have a love and belonging person who has 20 people on your team and two are active. And it's because they recruited all these people who need Mary Kent. So like they have this big heart and they want to help people, they want to help people. And some of the people they help are not people who want to help themselves. And so they might be, they could be great customers, but they're not ready to run a business because they're still living in their past, right? So love and belonging people, make sure you stay on the mentoring side, not the rescuer side. Because eventually you will become emotionally bankrupt if you keep giving out all your good stuff to people who don't do anything with it. Right? All of these withdrawals and no deposits will leave you bankrupt. Even the strongest love and belonging person can become bankrupt. A great example of a love and belonging person would be Mary Kay Asher herself. Mary Kay Asher was love and belonging, but she stayed on the mentor side. Jan Harris is a great example of a national who's loved in the long run. Jan Harris. Got it? All right, third one. Freedom and choice. Freedom and choice. People who are freedom and choice love their autonomy. They love, their, they love to be independent. They're like Hawaii. You know, you know, Hawaii is one of the 50 states, but it's out there by itself, right? You can't drive to Hawaii, right? It's like <laughs> out there, it's a little island off to its own, series of islands off to its own. And so uh, freedom and choice people, they are self-starters. They create their own path. They're find a way, make a way kind of people. Rarely are they confused. They don't do confused because they create their own solutions. Right? They, they figure things out, so they don't do confuse. So the beauty with freedom and choice people is that they don't need a lot of direction. They don't need to be told a whole bunch of stuff to do. They can just be like, okay, here's the goal. Make it happen. Set them free and let them go. The challenge with freedom and choice people is that sometimes they're all doing something that's not the right something. <laughs> Like, there's, they can be a, a little stubborn and find in their own way that they're over here and success is over here, right? And so they've been guided towards over to the right lane, but they're in the wrong lane. And they're going to stay over there until they figure it out. They can be perceived as difficult to work with. Directors, you might identify them in your unit as the difficult to work with people because they want to do it their way. So we'll talk about solutions for all of these later. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that look. All right, so an example of a Freedom of Choice National would be Stacy James. Yeah, Stacy James. Like, when we have someone teach a class, we tell them a topic, we give them a, a, a suggested outline. Here are some ideas on how you can build your class from these thoughts. Stacy can sit a little piece of paper. She goes, oh. I'm not going to teach on team building. I'm going to teach on living your best life. And the good news is she's a fantastic, fabulous teacher. So everything she teaches is unbelievable. So no one complains. They're like, I thought our class was on Tinder. <laughs> no matter. You loved it. And you took 20 pages of notes and you think she's amazing. So we never like actually go back to say single. go, now Stacy, you were supposed to teach Tinder. And we go, like, let it be. Just let it be. Right? You have to choose your battles with freedom of choice people. Directors, you might recognize them at around career conference time. Or you go, okay, everyone, career conference this year is in Galveston. We are staying at the Hilton. 